So today is shipment day. I had a whole bunch of boxes come in, as you can see. These are all from eBay. Uh, so I think this would be a good time to talk about some of the strategies on getting boxes. Hey, it's Don. Uh, today we're going to touch on shipping supplies. I had a whole bunch of boxes come in, as you can see. These are all from eBay. Uh, so I think this would be a good time to talk about some of the strategies on getting boxes. Constantly people are asking, where do you get them from? So with an eBay anchored store, you get $150 every three months in free, well, technically they say it's free supplies. You have to pay taxes on them. Um, if you've got more than one, you can get more than that. So this is roughly $300 worth of eBay shipping supplies that just showed up today. I've yanked off my labels, but you can see they're all sealed eBay uh, boxes and all. Um, there's nothing wrong with getting them from dumpsters, but for me, I just couldn't get enough of the same boxes. A lot of the dumpsters around here are locked or have no trespassing signs. I wouldn't want to get arrested just to get free boxes. Um, some city ordinance to ban it. Um, they're all under lock and key basically for a good chunk of the ones around here. But anyway, let's open this up here. I've ordered a box of poly bags of various sizes, as you can see here. Um, I think there's a hundred or more in each one of these. I've got several sizes, as you can see. And these are the ones I use probably the most. Now I can get these cheaper from a box manufacturer. Same exact everything, two mil, uh, poly, one by six by nine. Now, Ebays are actually a little smaller than one by six by nine, but this is typically what we get. With uh, Anchor Store, which is what we have, you get $150 worth of shipping supplies every, um, every three months, so on the quarterly basis, based on your store level. Let me pop this down there. And then I also got $150 worth of these 12 by 12 boxes, which is what I use. Um, we can get these locally for less than half. It's like 40% uh, or 60% less, 40% of what we get these for, we can get them locally all ready to go. Or what's even better yet on these is just to buy sheets of cardboard from a box manufacturer so they didn't spend all the time to cut them and to glue them and to process them so they're much cheaper just to buy a whole bunch of sheets 50 sheets the same size so 12 inch by 12 inch and let's see if we can get these out here now i actually cut these down the boxes that ebay sends the boxes in and i will actually use those to send bigger items nothing wrong with it all this is reusable material so so this is 12 by 12 boxes and we'll cut these down into 16 different pieces of cardboard and then we'll be able to mail 16 items with one single box roughly what's it dollar 92 a box you pay with ebay that includes shipping so the the extra cost and why these cost more than if you bought them locally is the shipping cost it might be half of the cost that you're paying for the boxes so it's like 48 bucks or something like that for 25 boxes shipped it might be 20 some odd bucks to ship these things so if you can get them locally get them but this is free money if i didn't get these i'd just be throwing away 150 bucks it only cost me an extra 10 or whatever dollars in taxes to uh, purchase these everything else just came out of the coupon and they even made it easier with the coupon on ebay because when you go to checkout there's actually a button where you can just click uh, use this coupon for the order and this is ebay shipping supplies it's the name of the seller account so there's 25 50 75 boxes 148 dollars and then you've got those boxes and then these boxes with poly bags which is usually what um, I do get on these. So with shipping supplies, if it works for you to dumpster dive, who cares? Go ahead and do it. If you're saving money, you gotta weigh your time to get them. With these, they just show up. I don't have to pick anything up or anything else like that. Secondly, if it's a eBay store, you get so many boxes with your store level, depending on your store level, the top three levels on the stores get 25, 75, I think, and then 150, which is what we get on the boxes. That's four times a year. You might as well use it because it's basically every month eBay gives you $50 
worth of boxes that you can get every three months. And I usually go through these and I'll have to buy some locally without a doubt. Um, we're actually out, I did pick up boxes, a whole bunch of boxes, just in case these didn't show up, I always keep backups. Now when I buy them locally, I usually buy 14 inch cube sheets or 14 inch cube boxes. And sometimes if it's cheaper to just get the 12 inch cubes, I'll buy those. Now the boxes I just showed you, the 12 inch cubes, you can ship 78s if you don't ship uh, small items like we do, or you can ship 16 packages of postcards, paper, trade cards, buttons, jewelry, action figures. We ship the exact same way with one strip. So 16 action figures I can ship in one of these boxes at $1.98. So just divide um, 16 into that. It's less than 15 cents or something like that. Just throwing a number out there per uh, packaging extra. Now I, with shipping wise too, I don't give the discount that I get from eBay to the customer. They pay the same price they would pay at the post office from me. So right there I save enough to at least compensate for the cost of the material, these boxes, out of there. And I'm not losing a dime or anything else like that. We're recouping some of it by keeping that difference. So again, dumpster diving's fine. As long as it's clean cardboard, it hasn't had something in it, you know, stuff like that. If, if you're going to dumpster dive at a place and they're just throwing away the cardboard, some of the businesses around here get money back from the cardboard. So if you're taking it, you're actually taking money from the business. It helps them offset the price of paying to have somebody come by and get their recycling. So anyway, that's just how we handle it. Again, for us, I can't get enough dumpster diving, even if I could, of the same size boxes to ship the same amount of stuff. It's so easy to, it's so easy to ship the stuff that we have in, you know, like to like stuff. So this, this is uh, Brimley here. This is our rescue dog. As you see, she, she won't leave me alone most of the time. But um, anyway, uh, shipping wise, I just get the eBay boxes or I get them straight from a box manufacturer. The same place I get bubble wrap, I get it in what's called end cuts. And I've talked about end cuts before. End cuts are when a, a box maker makes like, um, packing sleeves or something or the poly bags with you know bubble wrap in the inside they'll custom make bubble wrap um, envelopes and things like that and at the end of the day they come up with an end of a roll of bubble wrap that's an odd size they can't use and they sell those like 10 cents on the dollar I mean it's it's a huge it's a thousand foot roll usually like 20 I've even gotten them like 24 inches long for you know like 15 20 bucks so that's the best bet on that, again, if you need bubble wrap. I don't use circus peanuts, even if I can get them cheaper, just because they're a nuisance for me and the people getting them. Um, I do use um, the bubble wrap, as I said, but I mostly just use paper, crunched up paper and things like that. Boy, she's, she's a lovey-dovey mood today. Um, that's literally about most of what we do with shipping. It, it's super easy. I try to limit the size of stuff I get. So I only get one or two different sizes of boxes for the most part, like 90% of the time. Um, I do get some of those real small, like six by four by four eBay boxes, um, just because they're convenient for some things we ship. I don't do that every, every month or every uh, quarter. I usually once or twice a year, we'll get a couple runs of them and that usually lasts us. Most of the stuff I ship, I ship in bigger stuff, bigger boxes and stuff. A lot of that I can get locally as well too. So boy, she's really interested today. Um, that's literally about all there is to it. Whatever works best for you. If you have the store, use the free boxes. If you can get a local box manufacturer to sell you just strips, just strips of cardboard like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. Just strips of cardboard like 14-inch uh, cube sheets. 50 of them should cost you about $24 at most. They're not cut, so you can cut them at any size you want. Um, let me move this stuff over here. here. There we go. That's what she wanted. So anyway, that's really about it with, with shipping supplies. Okay, so now this is just the big boxes actually cut up. So I get a whole bunch of big, huge panels of cardboard out of the boxes that the boxes came in. These are the top flaps. I can cut these into strips for postcards, paper. I've got these long ones here. They could be used for, geez, anything. Pins, buttons, uh, pencils, pens, any of that kind of stuff. So all of this stuff comes with it. And then I even save these for stiffeners, for small items like um, service pins or something like that. So why waste all this cardboard when it comes 
to your house for free. Again, these are the ones that actually box the 75 12 by 12 by 12 eBay boxes that I purchased off there. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. easy to say and it sounds just fine but let's put this question right on the line what is the zip code a postal quirk what does it do how does it if you'll lend an ear we'll be glad to explain how the zip code eases your postal pain the first digit tells in which part of the nation your letter will find its destination since the country's divided into ten big sections each with a number to establish direct your letter has even departed we've already got it started <laughs> The next two digits go hand in hand to a major post office over land. Since each big section has town after town. We need these numbers to really narrow things down. We've got the section, we've got the city. Just two, two more, more numbers, numbers and we're sitting pretty. pretty. These last two digits are really specific. They're your local post office number. Terrific! <laughs> What a system, as you can plainly see, just five little numbers, quick as can be. But if you have a question, or you have a doubt, if you're still not sure what the whole thing's about, just always remember, zip code defined means city to city in one straight line. But don't take it from us. Don't take it from me. Try it yourself. You'll see. It's a better deal than you get from any other post office department.